Catalina. ¿Eh? Vamos a la región. Mónico. You know, what breaks my heart is that our children are being put in regular schools because that's the school that they will go to if they did not have a disability. At least that's what the law says. And yeah, they're taking our children, but they're segregating them in a bungalow at the regular school. So what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, just check, check the, you know, the belt. Just make sure it's not irritating him. I'll see you later, okay? And I'm picking him up because it's his first day of therapy. Oh, you are? Yeah. At what time? At three. Three o'clock? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Richard. I'll see you later. Thank you. Richard Martinez is a few weeks away from finishing seventh grade at El Sereno Middle School in Los Angeles. This is the first year he is attending all regular classes with students who are non-disabled. As a member of the team overseeing his individualized education program, Richard's mother, Sandra Renteria Martinez, advocated strongly for her son's inclusion in a general education setting. My interest is my child, and I am not willing to negotiate my child's education. Why should I have to do that if other parents are not being asked to do that, who are, you know, have typical children? Why should I have to sit at a table and negotiate what my son should receive or not? Why can he just receive what he needs and that's it? Oh, that was I was looking for you in there. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm, wearing, I'm in the dark coat with the glasses, short haircut. Gloria Sierra was principal at Eagle Rock High eight years ago when the Los Angeles Unified School District began an inclusion program at her school. I was at a district-wide administrators meeting. It was what is called the Gathering of the Clan. The head of the special ed unit uh, just walked up to me and said, <laughs> exactly this way, he said, Gloria, I'm sorry we have to do this to you, but um, you're going to uh, be getting one of the most severely handicapped uh, children in the district. There's something coming through. I later found out that it was total inclusion. The whole point is that children should attend their school of residence no matter what their disability is, if their parents so wish it. I love the story that um, a, mother, a mother told. She was uh, shopping at the local supermarket for years and years that she had lived in that community and shopped in that supermarket and taken her, her son uh, to shop uh, walking down the aisles. He had no peer group and, and she was invisible. She and her son were invisible but that for the first time, she'd, she'd go shopping, and students that saw Ralph in class would say, hi, Ralph. And the way she expressed it almost, uh, almost makes me emotional right now. It is a civilized way of dealing with other human beings in our society. People will s uh, say to me, well, then what you, what you really believe is that inclusion is important because it's a great socializing factor because it improves the society, because it makes us more sensitive, because it, uh, uh, but it's not necessarily about the child learning. Uh, the child learns. The child learns that, that, uh, that he or she is, 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 is valuable. You know, it's not expendable. I don't want to get my plane picking at you. Get you. Can I picking at you? My plane picking. I don't get this thing. What do they do? They take the pictures today? Is it just like your regular school pictures, only they're in spring? Yeah. Oh, no, let's get your spring picture. Mom, you will really bad with me. Do, do I need to write a um, check? Yeah. You need a shirt? You need a, you need a PE shirt? Is this it? No, not today. Is it in here? You don't need a PE shirt today. Cool. Sally Sewell moved from uh -huh. special education day classes to all regular classes four years ago. The transition was not easy. School after school in the family's neighborhood found small reasons to refuse enrollment for this girl. When we couldn't find a school, 
Cowan was the one that opened their doors to us. She got to Cowan in the middle of third grade year. They accepted her so openly and wholeheartedly. The first day she was in there, they had to put a new table in. They had to switch her whole class around. All through that year, <laughs> the rest of the year, Sally would ask questions without raising her hand. She'd blurt out, and of course, it was things like, what's the day today? What's the weather? It had nothing to do with what they were talking about. But she made it through that year. By fourth grade, she was raising her hands, and she was on topic. We're going to be moving. Put the nets together. Wait quietly so you can see what we're going to do. So. Richard was just born premature, you know, with technology and all. They were able to keep him alive. He weighed a pound, 12 ounces, and um, he was very tiny. <laughs> he developed cerebral palsy because of lack of oxygen, I was told. He also has multiple disabilities, and that's probably the best way that I can describe um, all the needs that he has. He has orthopedic um, problems. He's deaf. I need your topic by 8.35. You have like 11 minutes to find one. We have sports, category of movies. We have favorite sports. Everybody has to do 30 people eat. 30 or 40. I'm going to do 10. Right here on the top of the pier also. 30 people each or we 30 people each. Yeah, well, that's not long. 30 people is one class. Together. Mm -hmm. So you just have one charge for the whole group. Does that make sense? Are we okay there? Well, what's your homework tonight? Any of you. Good man. Good hey. um, Thank you. Hey. Talk, Karina. He was in and out of the hospital for probably about five years. We were in death because of insurance. You know, we no longer could have insurance because I was not employed anymore. And we didn't have luxuries or any of that. I've only gotten three so far. Ed, yeah, three so more hidden. I like the hard one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I need, I need to try to get If you get disqualified from your group, it'll be very hard for you to get a grade for it. Can you help? Who do you like? He likes king. Richard likes king. What do you think? Richard's group picks wrestlers as the topic for their survey to be started now and finished later as homework. Because tonight you need to get at least 30 dollars. The belt is late. We need to ask her. I put um, this together for all of you so that you could get to know Richard a little better. Richard's and, mother um, calls a transition meeting for her son's 7th and 8th grade teachers. I think it's so very important, okay, that we know 
What is it that he's capable of? What are his limitations? I mean, he's able to do so much more. He's able to speak in sentences, something that he cannot do before. Do you feel that he was not accomplishing that in his previous class? He could not add one and one, <laughs> or two and two, or he could not do that, and he has that skill to mm -hmm. do that now. And um, I honestly believe that he would not have been able to do that, you know, um, in the special day class. Mm -hmm. I think a lot has to do with high expectations. Mm -hmm. They're learning, you know, what they need to do. This is the first child in the school that's, you know, been fully in included. So I think, you know, in terms of the team that we have, it has been positive. Um, in the beginning of the year, Richard, you know, was not able to do a lot of what he's doing now. And I think that a lot of what he's doing now is because of the gains he's had in the inclusive setting. It's because he's exposed to things that he would not have been exposed to otherwise. From all the way, you mark them off and cast them. Then you yeah. Is that cooperation? I can he read? If the print's big like this, and you know, you give him maybe like three words at a time, or like for example, you know, what did you do today, or something like that, you know, and he'll sign the words. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's it's not at a first grade reading level, no. you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> and in children like, um, you know, with Richard's needs, we also need to, um, you know, focus on, on socialization as well. I, I think it's cool that they have him in here. I mean, it's better for him and it's a better learning opportunity for us to interact with them. And otherwise, we'd all just be like disgusted at their sight. And it's not right when people do that. Go with Richard. Sometimes they discriminate them for what they are, and they just don't go anywhere near them. I think they're scared because they're different. Who, Joanna? Giovanni? Joanna, the girl that was pushing Giovanni. No, Giovanni, the one in the wheelchair with the braces. <laughs> they look the like arm. if they were together. Porque este no se, este no se, se, le, se le separaba. Because he's, they're the only, she, she only knows Giovanni. Everybody else makes fun of her. Oh, that's sad. Mom. Uh -uh. Why did they make fun of her? I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, what's up? Go. Hey! Hey! Go back, go back, 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 back. Take her to use one of those big, one of the trash cans. <laughs> She's gonna lift me up here. Are you gonna just that noise? about your mom? Hmm? I don't know. I love her a lot. <laughs> um, she works very hard. 
because she has to maintain me and my brothers in El Salvador because I have two more brothers. Y aquí están cuando estaban chiquitos antes que me viniera. Así dejé a mi niño, al chiquito. <laughs> Ahorita ya está acá. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, he looks like Anna. Yeah. Huh? Uh, me toca, me da mucha tristeza dejarla a ella a veces porque hay días que <clears throat> trabajo, digamos, como mañana, sábado, sábado. A veces tengo un trabajo en la noche, sábado en la noche, sí. Así es que a veces ni vengo a verla. What kind of work do you do now? Trabajo en un restaurante haciendo de todo en la cocina. A veces, semanas que seguido trabajo los siete días de la semana, <laughs> hasta en la noche. Por eso a veces me da lástima ella, que a veces no le puedo dedicar mucho tiempo. Sorry. They had a war over there, and um, we lived like like something like this with my mom and my grandma and some other people. And there were um, soldiers <laughs> around it, and they wouldn't let anybody in or out. La guerrilla estaba muy muy este en moda en ese tiempo. Este se tomaban las colonias o se tomaban los pueblos y y se quedaban ahí por cierto tiempo. Y se tomaron donde vivíamos nosotros, en, se llama Mexicanos, la, el, es una colonia en, en, el, en la capital de San Salvador. The police, to like, well, get them out, they started uh, throwing bombs, but that didn't work. And um, one of the bombs, it, I think there were grenades, and um, one of them, like, I was outside, like, like, stay right there. And uh, then um, a bomb went down and um, and it, the, the little pieces of metal went into my back and made a hole. And it, it, it hurt my spinal cord. And um, I lost a lot of blood also. No sabían dónde caían. Ellos tiraron y tiraron y no sabían. Entonces una de, de las bombas fue a caer a, a la casa donde nosotros vivíamos. Y, y yo había salido en ese momento porque estaba duro para comprar comida, hay todo, todo lo que había. Y entonces cuando yo entré, alcancé a ver la niña que estaba tirada en el suelo con la otra, con mi amiga. Entonces cuando, cuando yo la miré a ella, no, nada más dije la niña y vine y la y, y la agarré yo solamente le miré sus ojos y estaba bañada en polvo no no le vi nada más que estaba bañada en polvo y tirada en el suelo y yo dije la niña se cayó pero yo no pensé que le había pasado nada malo yo nada más porque estaba con sus ojos abiertos y todo pero sí miré a mi amiga que, que ella sí ya sabía ya se veía muerta ella la que estaba a la par de ella Que está, ella, yo creo ella la llevaba de la mano que iban corriendo como a, a, a esconderse de, de lo que estaba pasando. Como estuve en el hospital uh, como un mes y medio y yo estuve con ella, sí se, se puso, lo que se puso fue muy mal de los nervios porque tenía miedo que la, que la inyectaran y todo eso, tantas inyecciones y suero, tanta cosa que le pusieron. Entonces ya después como que salió muy nerviosa porque en las noches gritaba y despertaba llorando y asustada de... What do you hope for Anna? Que quisiera que... So, que, que estudiara ella mucho mi mayor deseo y que fuera algo... algo que... no sé, que... Usted quiere que sea yo ingeniera. <laughs> They uh, put me in in special ed classes for like two weeks, and then my mom said, and my mom came and she said, well, yeah. she she's she's not behind, so um, I don't think she should be in special ed classes. So they switched me to regular classes. Sí. I want to be a doctor or something. Ever since I was small, 
A doctor. A doctor. But suddenly I've been like, between a doctor or a lawyer. La regañaba igual. No, tú usted puede, para todo. No puedo ponerme el calcetín. Tú puedes, tú puedes. Pero eso yo lo hacía para que ella se dé ánimo y, y, y aprenda a hacer las cosas. La parte más difícil fue cuando, cuando nació que pensábamos que pensamos que no iba a poder hacer lo que hasta la fecha ha hecho ahorita. O sea, cuando nació fue algo que como cualquier padre de familia lo siente muy doloroso. Nunca sabemos de la comunidad de los enfermos, porque en nuestro país los, como que los esconden, no, no, no los dejan ir a las escuelas. The Los Angeles Unified School District was accused of systematically violating the civil rights of its 65,000 special education students in a class action lawsuit filed in 1993. Individualized education programs were not being followed or even created. Special education services were not being provided in a timely manner, nor were children being identified for these services. Student files were lost. Parents found themselves ignored by the schools, their concerns dismissed. Many students with disabilities were warehoused in a district described as deeply entrenched in the culture of segregation. The Board of Education accepted liability for these civil rights violations and entered into the Shonda Smith Consent Decree, a court-supervised agreement promising to bring the nation's second largest school district into compliance with federal and state laws. There's probably 90% of the kids with special education with IEPs here that can be fully included successfully if the proper, you know, um, support was in place. We have an inclusion office and, you know, their support has been tremendous. Probably the best support that we've ever had and probably the only support that I feel I've had. About her being included in a kindergarten class at your school next year? I would love to have it at her home school. It would seem to be appropriate. Yeah, uh, yeah she, broke, she broke some bone in her arm that had to be surgically repaired. And I have worked with that family before. Would you have time to go to an IEP? Um, let me just get my book. That's not bad. Venice and Lincoln North on Lincoln Boulevard, a half a mile. Uh, autism class at Broadway. In my viewpoint, an IEP is a promise. It's a promise to a family that these are the services that are going to be delivered to your child. It's, a, it's an identification of what the child's strengths and challenges are. It's important for parents to be heard in the IEP. And how have you experienced the IEP yourself? Lo, a lo que voy es que sí es importante que el padre o la madre tenga que ver que participe en el IEP y que nos podría decir de cómo le ha ido usted en una experiencia en su IEP. Cuando yo empecé con Diana, que la niña estaba chiquita, yo duré mucho tiempo para saber que era una IP porque la escuela a mí no me lo dijo. A mí me decían una IP o a mí me decían una reunión, una reunión de la IP, pero que viniera una persona y me dijera, mira, esto es una IP, se llenan estas formas, es el programa de educación individualizado, donde tu hijo por ser especial se le van a abrir programas de acuerdo a, a, lo, que el ni, a lo que tu hija vaya necesitando. La experiencia de mía, mía no fue buena. Porque a mí no vinieron ni me dijeron, a mí no vinieron ni me enseñaron. What was your first IEP like? A nightmare. A nightmare. And I think all through his elementary school, there were nightmares till Richard was in the fifth grade. You face isolation. You face discrimination. You face hostility. You face everything that you would not want to be exposed to. You know, but that's what you face, and you face that because you have a child with special needs, and you're not wanted. <laughs> you don't belong there. <laughs> um, they had sent me to go visit a special um, school, and I said, no, this is not where I want him to come. You know, I want him to go to the school that he would go to if he didn't have needs. I didn't know that there was that piece that the a district can give you an assistant, so I volunteered to be my son's assistant for three years. I attended school with him every single day. I, I remember that every every time that I would put Richard to bed, you know, uh, my tears would just roll down my eyes because um, I didn't feel that there was people out there that really understood what I wanted and, you know, that they will not really accept what my vision was for my son.
Now they see him and, and they're amazed to see that, wow, she never stopped fighting. For three years you went with him every day and mm -hmm. sat with him through mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody said to you there was you could have an aide? No. No. Until probably, you know, after a while, then they realized that maybe they didn't want mom there anymore, and they wanted an assistant there. And so I was still there, though. Um, and um, that's kind of how it happened. You know, it's ironic because um, I, I really do believe that if a parent is not involved and if a parent is not there um, on a daily basis to see what's working and what's not, whether you know your rights or not, um, you know, if, if you're there, um, you're going to get the best that you can. Um, you know, out of it, education for your for your child. and we were sort of at a crossroads. He was, he was leaving kindergarten and we were trying to decide whether we should go in a public school or a private school or what type of school. We consulted with a lot of people and the conclusion we formed was that he needed to be as socialized and as normalized as possible. That's why we opted for, for him to be in a, a fully included sort of environment where he was in with regular children. You know, the other option was that if we had sent him to a special ed campus, which was the way they did it, tenor, 15 years ago, we were concerned that A, he would be bored in terms of the academics, and B, he would be modeling other autistic behavior, which, you know, would have been a disaster. I think I should use my light on. I'm you want to use both? Okay. I'm righties. Where are you? What am I? I'm a righty. Is everyone a righty? Yeah. The school district provides Aaron Brock with occupational therapy twice a week in a room near his second grade class. This special education service, arranged at Aaron's IEP by his mother and father, improves his coordination, thereby increasing his independence on the playground and in the classroom. Here, use it to hold the, the gizmo. All right. Everything is building blocks, his socialization, his self-confidence, his awareness of the world, his ability to, to become more flexible, to change, which is a major issue for autistics. All the things we work on are building blocks to Aaron being able to make it on his own. Yes. Nine, one. Nine, 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 is one of the brightest children in the class and is well liked by his peers. Robin is one on one, who's fabulous, is going out of the room 15 minute intervals and he's able to work independently. And that was a big change from the beginning of the year. Aaron, when I first met him, we would sit down and do some writing, and I, I literally started with one line at a time. Just to pick up a marker, he'd throw it across the room. I don't want to do this, it's too hard, I hate it. I kind of had to physically hold him in place. Everything he did, right after that, he got a reward, such as if he sat for five minutes, he got a cookie. If he sat for 10 minutes, he got to play the computer. So the Aaron that you see today is completely different from the Aaron four years ago. When he came for his four-year checkup with his pediatrician, we said, he's learning these games really fast, and he, he's not just randomly playing them. He understands. When he started to use a computer was the first sign that 
of Aaron's intelligence, that we knew something was there, because he was so delayed in so many ways. His mom and I will never forget, he had a condition called strabismus, and he, his eyes were pointed outward. They were not in alignment. And we took him to this specialist who did eye surgeries, and he looked at Aaron. Aaron was all of nine months old, and he said, don't bother with the operation. This kid's so damaged, it won't make any difference. Even if you correct his vision, he's got so many other problems, he'll never make it. So, you were wrong. <laughs> He did make it. I was a, a, a corporate employee. I was a department head. I gave up that, that world. I became a freelancer, make less money, but I have a much more fulfilling life. And I know I've made a difference in his existence. Bye, Mr. Nessia. Nosotros aquí la familia somos de Nayarit, México. La gente de allá pues somos fuertes. Sola como dice uno salía adelante. No sé, a lo mejor yo pienso el cariño, el amor que nos tenemos los tres nos hace salir a ser fuertes, ser más fuertes. Este que tomé la soda, los M&M's, los chicken nuggets y las papitas y las enchiladas y la soda. Every time I come home from school, me, me and my mom talk about like what I do at school. O oh, en la escuela, aquí mm -hmm. en la casa no. Mm -hmm. O oh, también aquí en la casa. Mm -hmm. Eso es Aunque no lo comas, de todos modos. No, pero no. Tiene que ser algo que pueda comer. Those two pictures right there, the middle one and the one over here, yeah. that's me when I was smaller. You're very uh... <laughs> Él trabaja en una fábrica donde reconstruyen alternadores de carros y stars y por las noches pues security. <laughs> Pero Cynthia es es inteligente, que reservada, es reservada, no se calla las cosas, ve cosas que no le parecen y si ella En ese momento lo puede decir, lo dice. Y ahorita yo le doy gracias a Dios que ya, ya, ya. Está una etapa bonita. Ya está viviendo ahorita, ahora sí, porque antes eran puros hospitales. ¿Qué es la condición? Muscular dystrophy. It's right there, I used to walk a little bit. I was in fourth grade right there. And then when I was 10, I stopped walking. Oh, hey, Lee! When I started at the school 13 years ago, there wasn't the population of special ed students, but now they've centered them all around where my room is, so out of the eight classrooms, six are special ed. This was my classroom 13 years ago, and every class was regular around me, so when I stepped out, when the bell rang, all the kids started, there was movement, and the kids knew this was the passing period. Now, as you can see, if you look down the hallway, the passing bells ring, and there's not one, stu one regular student that even comes in our hallway anymore. We've been marked as the special ed hallway. North building is special ed, and nobody even walks through here, not teachers, not students, unless they're leaving or coming to school. Special ed single classes need to be integrated, not all of them over there in that building. There's, a, there's, there's integration in a classroom, and there's integration in a school. Superintendent of Schools Ramon Cortinez is meeting with parents from the class member review committee of the Shonda Smith Consent Decree, volunteers who monitor the district's efforts at compliance with the law. Dr. Cortinez aims to save the troubled school system by breaking it into 11 semi-autonomous branches, 
In keeping with the consent decree, the Cortinas plan for the first time calls for putting 11 special education administrators into the decision-making core alongside their general education counterparts. Committee members want to hear more from Dr. Cortinas. Señor Cortinas, sabemos que usted va a estar aquí hasta junio. We know, Mr. Cortinas, that you will be with us till June. A mí me gustaría saber este qué es lo que usted piensa que va a quedar ya bien impl implementado para empezar a trabajar con los niños. I want you to tell us what do you think is going to be well implemented and is going to start working for the children. I'm trying to set a new culture in this district of inclusion, of, uh, of, uh, of a deep understanding of what all means. Uh, I'd like to order there be no more hostility, but you know I can't do that. I think we've talked a lot in most districts, not just this district, about all children, uh, but it's been more rhetoric than practice. Mm -hmm. Some of it has to do with the development of these two kingdoms. Of, of special ed and general ed. Once we start on this, on this road where these are two separate groups, then you lose the things that are the most important. You lose belonging, you, you lose that sense that, that this child can demonstrate mastery in different ways. They had a special school in the town where I grew up for physically handicapped students only. And that's where I started doing um, service there for two hours a day. So starting since I've been 16 years old, I've been working with these guys. And at this point now, it's more than half my life now I've been working with the physically handicapped. And uh, it's challenging and rewarding. And at times it's hard. And that's where the patience comes in, too. <laughs> I'm waiting for the front of the school to get ramped. <laughs> yeah, so I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm patiently waiting to see if that'll ever come to pass. Sometimes I hear that uh, I, you, there's not enough room to have the stairs and the ramp. Well, so maybe everybody can walk up the ramp. And this is the whole thing of bringing the kids not just into the school and letting them be in the mainstream, but that when they get out there that they feel like the world is theirs too, that they can go around any place and be welcome. You said that you were thinking about your future. Um, yes, I am thinking about my future. I want to go to four-year university college and and I really wish to be a lawyer and I could fight for the people, right? I would like things change. I would like to see the kids start going out to regular class and not to stay in one building for all day long and see the same people. And I think they should have the same right to go to learn as much as the other kid do. But how do you do this? This? See, look. Two could go into 26, right? Mm -hmm. So then you put two right here. I started to get interested in, in math because it's like the main thing you'll be learning like in your whole life. Whatever job you do, it's like the main thing that will be in, in it. And then 13 is a prime number, so right there you can do nothing else. Tell me about Greg as a teacher. He's a co-teacher. Cool he's like, every time we need help with something, he's always like right there to help us. He always gives us, he always tries to tell us to go out more like into the regular classes and everything. I do fractions at the end of the year with them before they go to high school. So that they all, can, at least they can go to the algebra classes maybe when they get up to high school. But great. I'm not gonna stay at Miss Soria and Miss Wallace class. I'm gonna go out to the regular I math class. So. I, so. I am. I'm you not gonna. You should go out to all regular classes if, if you're the law magnet. Mm -hmm. To counter the concentration of kids in a school like El Sereno would be to to have their kids go to the neighborhood school. And at first, you know, maybe they aren't gonna have every classroom um, accessible. But nor is it at this school every classroom accessible. But they can make accommodations to bring 
the classes that the student needs to, to places that they can get to that so that they are accessible. Uh, unless there, every classroom is on a different level, I cannot see why the regular schools could not accept these students. Why should they? Because they live in that neighborhood of that school, and that's where all the other students are going to school. All their friends, all their neighbors, their brothers and sisters are all going to that school. And if they go to that school too, that's the experience that I think almost all of us grew up with. When you take the child and bust him into a situation, and then he's bust back to his neighborhood, he never gets the chance to become as social as you and I did when we were in school. We'll have 50 minutes to write a, a creative fiction story in class. You have to bring any notes, draft, brainstorming. That's what she's doing today. Main character. Ooh, ooh, can, can I get come and get character from? The character's from yeah. um, Zoila the, the Goat. But you have to use the main character. I am, but I'm going to give you other. Who are you going to use? Zoila, I mean not Zoila, but Zelta the Goat, or are you, you going to use Aaron? I have to use both again. I mean, baby, can I get on you, Tucker and Cougar? Okay. So, she already knows what she wants to write. It's a matter of you just writing it down for her. She wants to do some brainstorming. Find some paper, okay. and then I'm going to go get Nicole's backpack and start with her. Nicole, what do you have for homework? Uh, you have any more English? English? Spelling words? No. No spelling words? Okay. Yay! Yay! Sally, I've worked with her for, I think, about three, four years now. I can't say that me and Sally started out wonderful because I didn't understand her as far as when she started talking and she was stressed and I was stressed and the communication was bad. And I said, well, what is wrong with her? You know, and I said, what does she want? But it was a matter of understanding her and realizing, because I was the type of person, I was new to the job, I wasn't trained. I would just get her in the chair and push. Which class, where are you supposed to go? And I re and she would she would kick and be crying and I would say well, we're going to class you know and I realized she was a human being and she had her feelings and you know I was supposed to ask her do you want to go to recess or you want to go hang out with your friends she had the same feelings as other kids at that school she did not want to just be pushed in a chair and told what to do okay. is that okay with you yeah I get fine want banana you want chocolate banana all right. Yes. Most uh, cerebral palsy that you get are the spastic type where both muscles are moving at the same time, such as when you want to move your arm. One muscle is trying to pull up and the other one's trying to pull down at the same time. You need to open your fingers. Come on, relax. Ruben's um, very bright. He answers very quickly, so he's sharp. But it's difficult for him to express what he knows. They're working with him right now to use a, what do they call it? a liberator, and it's a type of computerized system so that he can answer in a language. When he was practicing with it, it was really cute. One day I walked in and he said, "Hi, Pam," from the computer. So it was really fun. But it has not been functioning correctly. So when the electronic goes down, you resort to back to watching where he nods and giving him a multiple choice of three or four items. How long has it been not functioning for? Hmm. You know, it's been a few months now, about three. Want me to lose that one? Yeah. Just don't pull it, okay? Yeah. When we think of a rock... Give him money! Hey, when we think of a rock, certain types of rocks mix together, changing their thing when they're heated up. Renee. I don't know what's Ruben. A fool. A to cast. Ruben's mother, Teresa Vasquez, stops by the nurse's office on the way to her son's IEP. 
Upstairs in the, the library? No, no, no. Sorry, I'm so, Sorry's office? He's going to Sorry's office. Okay, is so that where the IEP is? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll be right over. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Vasquez has not been informed yet that Ruben's teacher, a key member of his IEP team, is absent from school today. La, el IEP que yo tengo es para la tecnología asistiva. ¿Verdad? Es para esa razón por qué le llamaron, ¿verdad? Pues para eso y para evaluar, evaluación también. Evaluación de... de anual o que de terapia. Ok, lo que voy a hacer, entonces, ¿qué quiere hacer, señora? ¿Quiere seguir o quiere... Um, Pues si no están todas las personas que, que deben de estar. I think the liberator and the, the wheelchair would be terrific for him, except they've been in repair for quite some time. And that's part of what we're going to discuss today, um, the technology that would assist him to be more independent. She, she has decided not to have the IEP because the teacher's not here today. So we're going to have another date. We're going to schedule okay. another date. But she has some health concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was telling me that she's very happy with the new um, health care assistant. However, uh, she would like him to be on the bus with him, you know, as a continuation. So, so I think it's a good idea. But I, I don't know if we can do that this year. I think we should just let her know that maybe we'll do it for next year. What do you think? Well, it's only four weeks. I, I, we've, we have had had problems recently because Ruben's been more sick, he's had a lot more secretions and stuff and, the, and there is a big need for continuity right now. He's so been do getting... Do you want to change, make the change now? I think now? we should change as soon as possible. Uh, ella me está recomendando que deberíamos de cambiarlos eh, tan pronto que podamos. Entonces yo y ella vamos a hablar, vamos a hablar con el director también y vamos a hacer una decisión. It's up to you, but it, it, for his sake, it, it should be done soon. So okay. it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to do the the paperwork, and right. we have to make decisions as to. Y, y la, la este, la, para la tecnología, entonces vamos a esperar también hasta que se haga el. Ella, ella tenía que venir porque la cita que yo tengo es con ella. Con ella. Con ella, ella hace un reporte. Usted debe de tener el reporte unos días anterior para que los repase. Y luego después de eso, entonces, um, ¿hacemos el IEP? No, pero sobre el cambio de... Oh, el cambio luego, está... luego. Lo, lo, yo tengo que hablar con ella porque tenemos que hacer algo, uh -huh. hacer, cambiar a Sergio, cambiar a Oscar y dejar al distrito saber, porque no se hace nomás sí, inmediatamente. Sí, sí, yo sí. The Parent Resource Network was established by the school district under the Shonda Smith Consent Decree. A woman has just walked in off the street. She needs help preparing for her daughter's IEP scheduled for tomorrow. Y ver ahora mi hija que está como un animal ahí arrinconada. No es justo. Y yo y yo yo pedí a la escuela que yo quería justicia porque es mi hija. En la escuela a mí, a mí no me quiere escuchar y yo por ser madre tengo que ir a muchos lugares y por eso estoy aquí. ¿Y en qué salón estaba? Ella estuvo en, en kinder y después ahora está en, en primer grado. Sí, pero ¿en qué programa estaba? Escuela, ese es regular, ella nunca ha estado en escuela especial. So, ¿Estaba en un programa regular siempre? Regular, sí, ha estado en ¿Pero kinder. qué faltaba en, en ese salón? ¿Qué faltaba? ¿Por qué no implementaron su...? su Porque su... ellos querían esperar a, a que la niña fuera evaluada. Una vez que la niña fue evaluada, que duró ocho meses, entonces este, me dijeron, señora, aquí ya no la podemos ayudar. Y después de que completaron las evaluaciones, en vez de asistir a tu hija, te dieron las opciones, pero no te dieron la opción de la escuela. Cuando, cuando los... De la escuela regular, ¿no te dieron esa opción? No. ¿Por qué razón? Porque mi niña necesita terapia de speak y ahí no la ¿Terapia hay. de qué? De speak, speech therapy. de okay. hablar. De hablar. Porque como ella no habla bien. Y dijeron la escuela que ella no que podía no ir a podía, la escuela no, porque no tenía terapia. No, ella no me pueden proporcionar eso. Y lo que tú quieres para tu hija es que se quede en esa escuela con el apoyo de educación sí. espe especial, sí. incluyendo la terapia de sí. habla. Y, y la niña está frustrada, la niña ya está enojada, ya eh, está completa, mi hija está completamente diferente. Y ella necesita que otra vez vuelvan, tengan confianza en ella y que no me la tengan así. Porque yo sentí 
tan, tan duro allí, ver a mi hija que la tiene apartada, volteada. The PRN staff handle thousands of calls from parents who speak English, Spanish, Korean, Russian and Armenian. Under current policy set by the district, staff may attend IEP meetings if requested to do so by parents. Good afternoon, PRN Research Network. This is Rosa, may I help you? Yeah. Connie Perez is another parent who faced the bureaucracy of special education. I only asked them, and I found out the hard way that asking means nothing, because for another year, they stalled me. So now we're here at second grade, and he still can't read. So now I, I figured out, okay, it has to be in writing, and you're really going to have to be a, a little more, you know, insisted that it be done. There's a tendency to think of special education as a place rather than services. No. Services, because you can give those services virtually anywhere. My child has always been fully included. He comes to resource a couple of hours. He's now in the fifth grade, getting ready to graduate. He reads at the fifth grade level. God knows where he would have been if I'd have been a parent that didn't speak English and didn't have another parent who told me about special ed. Well, now the parents have this office. <laughs> so hopefully when they get the number, it'll start from here. All the help in the world. Se le enseña algo y nada más lo están hablando, ¿verdad? Este posiblemente no sería la mejor manera de enseñarle a ella. Oh, Quizás no. ella tiene que ver lo que no. está aprendiendo. Ella puede, ella quisiera que, que le enseñaran de diferentes maneras, okay, no solamente eso, Esto hablando. quiere decir sí. eso, sí. pero la primera cosa que tú te tienes que asegurar es saber sí. cómo aprende mejor ella, sí. ¿verdad? Es una muchachita que aprende visual, auditoriamente, mm -hmm. um, tiene que agarrar las cosas, ¿verdad? Entonces estas cosas tienes que estar bien enfocadas. Sí. ¿Verdad? Um, tú quieres saber cómo la educación este, especial y los servicios relacionados ayudarán a tu hija. Oh, sí, es muy importante. Quiero, quiero que le den tutorial. Aquí los... está. El año escolar extendido. Uh -huh. Está aquí abajo. Transporte si lo necesita. ¿Verdad? Este plan positivo de intervención uh -huh. para, la, para el comportamiento si no se comporta como debe. ¿Verdad? Este, ¿Cómo se um, cubriría las uh, necesidades de Diana para el, el um, uso de ayuda tecnológica? Esto se tiene que hablar en el IP. Y este es el mapa, mira. OK. Entonces, cuando hables de tu hija, aunque está en inglés, Maggie te lo va a hacer en español. Cuando tú estás diciendo esto, es porque estás diciendo a la escuela que tú quieres esperar que, que te asistan en implementar tus sueños. So, que va a ser aceptada y va a ser saludada por la, los um, estudiantes en la escuela y en la comunidad. ¿Le gusta eso? Sí. Sí. Va a tener la ayuda que, que necesita mi hija, la ayuda que no tuvo. Ok, so está lista. Okay. Sí. Gracias. Ok. Initially, he was he was in the very back of the room with um, Karina, his aide, and with Jesse, his one-on-one, -on -one, and um, that was not inclusive at all. We moved him up to the front, and things have totally changed. Mm -hmm. He's right here. He's this close to another student, to a mainstream student, which I switch because they want to, they fight <laughs> about who gets to sit next to Richard. <laughs> the most critical aspect of this whole issue of, of bringing Richard and other students in is the. Uh, the growth you're going to see in this personality. One of the gains that I see in your class, Richard's increased um, vocabulary. Mm -hmm. You know, he uh, was memorizing the words so quickly. You know, we said four words and he was memorizing all ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trip. Okay. Trip. Okay, then show me. Show me. Trip. Trip. There's one person who came up to us, an assistant principal, who really said some harsh words about Richard's uh -huh. place and what a waste of money it was. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, there, there are those feelings, and I'm sure there will always be those feelings. Well, we don't know what Richard's capable of doing. Richard, Richard can live a full and, and, and good life, and he can learn a lot of things. And I'll re reiterate what I said before. I think, I think a society is measured by what we do for those who are most in need. Do you translate the, what is being said by the teacher, or do you change it? I change it, and I modify it to what I think he'll understand. Because there's times if I interpret everything that the teacher's saying, I lose him. And I don't think it's right that I do that for him because he'll miss it. And I need to make sure that he understands the main idea or the main point of what's happening in class. Why does she say she knows what it's like to be without a house? Because she keeps on moving and moving. She keeps on moving, right? Remember the first couple of chapters? She's talking about how the only thing she really wants is a house, right? She goes to the tarot card reader, and what does she see in the tarot cards? They have nothing to do with the last week garbage or fear of rats. Nights come. Nothing wakes them but the wind. There are never going to be the meeting of the instructional goals that you have with a fully uh, able child uh, when you have someone that's that severely handicapped. The point is including a person that is part of our society in that society. And it should happen here. It should happen in a country like ours. What more do we have to offer the world than, than our receptivity and our openness to deal with everything? No, tomorrow Saturday. Tomorrow Saturday, after Sunday, then when... School? I told you finish, conversation finish. No, right now you pay attention. Therapy time. Yeah. <laughs> Push! Push. Uh. Six. <laughs> Push. <laughs> you can see the wall. Get off of me. No, pay attention. Push. You're not talking about school right now. There you go. Take a big step. Push. My daughter, she's, uh, you know, she's just joy. You know, there's times that she'll sit with me and she'll say, well, you know what, maybe I should be a doctor so that I can find a cure. <laughs> you have a tremendous amount of strength mm -hmm. and, you know, and fortitude to do what you do. I'm trying to find out where that comes from. I think it's my mom. <laughs> my mom's a very strong lady. It was um, four girls and one boy, and my mom had three jobs. She has a home, she has her car, she's got everything. And it was just my mom working with minimum wage. And you know, we all made it through school and, and we're all doing okay. You know, she always raised us to be independent, to be responsible and to be accountable for what we do. You always walk with your head up. And you know, whatever it is you're gonna do, be sure that what you're doing, you know, is always something good because you will be accountable for that. Today is Wednesday. What's today? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yes. Set your goals, and you will achieve your dreams. Look to the future. Your future holds endless possibilities. Cynthia Delgado.
Nicole Vega. Xochil Cornejo. Rocio Verduzco. Richard Martinez. Lorena Mercado. One day when the other elevator broke down, I took the kids on the other elevator, and when I came down, one of the people that worked there had said to me, oh, right here's a bathroom right here, a handicapped bathroom. And I said, oh my God, I didn't even know. And when she opened up the door and I went in there, it's nicer than our bathroom. All right, great! It even has a tilted mirror, so when the kids come up to the sink, they can see themselves. It's been there for three years, but they won't open it for use, and I don't really know why they aren't doing it.